top and find where the lowest ground is from. Amen. Yep, come on. I mean, I'll tell you what, man, I know where I was at one time in my life. Yep. Yes, Lord. The things that I've done, but I'll tell you what, it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. Yes. yes. When there's somebody in the you live around the people your whole life, when they sing this old crazy idiot living, wow. uh, they just bound by all kinds of things in this world, and then they see a transformation. Yeah, man. But when yeah. Jesus comes yeah. into somebody's yeah. life yeah. and sets them free, he said, whoever the Son sets free, is free indeed. Yeah, there is power still in the name of Jesus yeah. to bind anything to any place wow. in anybody's life. Wow. And if I somebody sitting here this morning, yeah. I'm going to pray as we go through this service. I don't know what's got you found, but I know the one. He says in the name of Jesus we can pray and we can believe together. They got to get some more. Yeah. We don't serve no halfway God. We serve a God in all the ways of yeah. God. Yeah. If you stand here this morning, you need to be released. Hey, all you got to do is call on Jesus. Hey, he's not a respecter of person. What he done for me, he'll do for somebody else. I tell you what, he said, we're two or three gathering in his name. They said, I'm in the midst. We may not be able to see him. But I'm telling you, he's here. He's the Lord. Why? Because he loves his children. He wants good things. He said, I would hold no good things. So you walk up now. I give you the desires of your heart. Are you praying in the will of God? It's in the word of God. He said, I'm not a liar. I will perform what he said. Yeah. I'm a convicted felon, but I can take that weapon right into the jails with me. These overcomers beatings with me. I don't care. I take my Bible as the powerful thing in this world. Yeah. When it's been reunited with the Holy Spirit that's been lit inside of you, there is power in that word of God. I just set the whole world free. I'll tell you, we serve a God that said my people go into bondage. But for lack of knowledge, are you reading the word? Or you can be transformed. It's not just information. It's for transformation. Us as believers, if there's somebody sick in this house today, they can be set free because the word of God says he can. It ain't about me. It's about the Jesus that loved us and died on the cross. I mean, he's worthy to be praised. I'm sure you're not what you're going through. I still go through struggles and battles. But I still know who to go to. Yeah. And I got friends I can call to pray for me. Yeah. Right. Uh, but when I do that, you know what? I don't stop there. I go to the main uh -huh. source. Yeah. Hey, I got some good friends that'll pray for me. They check up on me when I'm going to do things. And that's not me. So much to me. Yeah. And if we're a body, yeah. one's weak, we're all weak. Yeah, man. If you're not confessing your faults unto us, you cannot be healed. Hey, that's what the word of God. If you confess your sins and faults one to another, we'll pray for you. And then God will do what he says. Yeah, you man. shall be set free. Yeah. Man, he's good this morning. Yes, he is. I know where he brought me from. Hey, I get excited on what God's done. 
the natural, I'm thinking, is there something I'm supposed to get at Walmart? And I was preaching, I never will forget, I love how God shows you things. And I was preaching on repairing relationships. And Walmart, and God kept saying Walmart. The first time I just kind of shrugged him off. Maybe I know none of y'all has ever done it, but maybe like, be quiet, God, I'm trying to preach here. And he said it again, Tyler. And finally I just said, look, I got to say this. I don't know why. I said, but Walmart. And I seen a girl, Greg, in the back. And I seen tears start going down her eyes. And I seen her start making her way to an altar. Amen. She had come down to visit her mom and dad, Miss Diane from South Carolina. And she was supposed to have went home the day before, but she didn't get to. Let me tell you about divine intervention. Amen. And she had not talked to her sister, and I forget how long she said it was. And I'll give everybody in the room a minute to think about where she worked at in South Carolina. She worked at Walmart. Amen. And when God gave me that word, and I, it, it ain't like I was like Superman or nothing. No, I just obeyed what the Spirit said. It didn't have to make sense to me. But it changed everything for her. Yes. That's the importance of a word from God. Just like every one of us. And obedience. I remember when I was first called to preach, I remember sitting in the jail, the old jail. Remember they used to have the, the church services in the uh, cafeteria. And they bring everybody in there and you'd sit on them old tables. And Greg, pastor asked me, he said, you got a, a word tonight? I said, no, lied. <laughs> Josh, I should have known something was up because he never asked me before. So they sung. You remember back in the old days, you'd take guitars in there. He asked me again. And I'd love to say, I jumped up with all boldness and said, yes, I have a word straight from God. But no, I said, no. I lied again. <laughs> and he asked me a third time. And I lied again. Oh, my goodness. The man proceeded to get up, Greg. Went to my scripture. Amen. Oh. Preach my word. Now you can believe it or not, I don't care. I was there. <laughs> hey man, got done. I was sitting in the very back of that old cafeteria on one of them tables, and I never will forget it. He walked back there, and he climbed up on beside me on that table, and he said, "Did that sound familiar?" <laughs> and in that moment, I realized God's will gonna be done. That's right. And somebody needed to hear that word, and I was robbing. Everybody in there because of my fear. What are we not doing because we're scared? Oh. Every one of us. Amen? Amen. All right, you got your Bible? And like Greg said, mind the Lord this morning. If you got to pray, come pray. If there's something you need to do, do it. You know, the Bible says, I'll be in the book of 1 Kings, 17th chapter, if you want to go ahead and get there. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is. If your strength is coming from anywhere else, it'll wire out. It'll run out. It'll waver. But if we get our strength truly from the joy of how good God is, right. that won't ever run out. Ain't nobody in here got to look past the last hour to realize how good God is. Amen. Probably wouldn't even have to look back five minutes if you thought about it. If you thought about all the good things God done from the time you opened your eyes this morning till you got here now, mm -hmm. you couldn't thank him enough. That's why I said what I said to him. You shouldn't need nobody to excite you. You shouldn't need nobody to give you goosebumps. You shouldn't wait enough for nobody to make you run or shout or jump. That's you right. should already been there when you got That's here. Right. That's right. Amen. Like I said, my name's on the book of life. Uh, there ain't nothing else I can get happier about this morning. Amen. Amen. And regardless of what happens on this earth, my name will still be there. Yes. Amen. Whether it be sickness, whether it be death, whatever. Hey, i got to die for I ever get there. Amen. So what am I worried about? That's right. We, got, we should be the happiest people in the world. But you ever watch them TV preachers? And they'll pan that camera out through the crowd. And there, there's a bunch of them just sitting there. 
Who made the can, John? Yeah. I wonder what they're having over at the restaurant. Come on. Or this. Yeah. What time is it? I know that nobody here does that. But checking their Facebook. Hey, man. You don't see a lot of them with one of these in their hand. I guess they all got it memorized. They don't need it. I guess you put so much faith in a man that he ain't going to lie to you. It would never happen. Not in here. Amen. We should have this thing and, and hold it like it's the most cherished thing in the world. Amen. Praise God. Like Greg said, uh, this is a weapon of mass destruction right here. This thing right here can destroy anything. Amen. It can call anything to pass. It can cast some stuff down. It can lift some stuff up. Amen. Amen. And if we don't know what it says, shame on us. Amen. Praise God. If you've got just enough to carry you through, Woo. shame on you. Preach it. Oh. Hey, this thing's bigger than us. That's right. Hey, somebody depending on what you got. That's Amen. right. And if you ain't got no extra, I, I'm fixing to get over in here in a minute. Y'all just borrow with me. If you're afraid to give away what you got Woo. because you don't know when you're going to replenish it. There you go. Maybe, maybe Chad will oh, preach on what I need this week. Maybe kids will teach on it in Sunday school. Yeah. Maybe I'll by chance flip the radio on for the five minutes I'm in the car and God will miraculously right. put a word in there in there that moment. Go. There you go. Preach it, Amen. Or is that just me? Come on. No, you go. We got problems. How many people in here they can't see? I always tell you that. But I'll let you in on the secret. Everyone knows you got a problem. Amen. How many people in here right now believe you're in a place of lack? Come on, baby. Maybe, maybe you want to be there because you're lazy. Amen. Oh, did I say that? Go ahead. Amen. I'm glad y'all ain't easily offended, Miss Diane, or I'd, I'd be up here by myself. All right, I'll be here. But guess what? I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm lazy too. Can I get amen? Yeah. It ain't just you. I'm not up here pointing a finger at you going, Billy, you're lazy. He ain't no. It's all of us. We find ourselves sometimes in places we were never meant to be because we're too lazy to find a way out. Amen. Or we're too lazy to keep from getting there. Oh, wow. That's good. But sometimes, hear me now, I'm going to get over the word a minute. Y'all bear with me. Y'all already know where I'm going. Y'all read ahead. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're in a place of lack. Because God put you there. Amen. That's right. That you can realize that your life don't affect the kingdom. No, it don't. I'll say that again. I don't care if you like it or not. Your life does not affect the kingdom. Your life does not affect the abilities of God. That's right. No, it doesn't. I said it earlier. God can make whatever He wants out of whatever He wants to. Amen. Look around this room. Hey, man. Look around this room and see what God's made. Out of what we used to be. Lord have mercy. If that ain't enough to make you happy. You didn't know none of us. Amen. Amen. But God is good. All the time. And if we could ever truly believe that. If we could ever truly get past the point of that just being a catchphrase. Amen. If we could ever get past that just being a bracelet or a t-shirt or a bumper sticker. Greg, if I could put that t-shirt on my heart one day and realize that God is good and walk in the fact that God is good and talk in the fact that God is good and operate in the fact that God is good regardless of what I feel, regardless of where I'm at, mm. I don't where I'm at don't affect God's goodness. Amen. What's good in my life and what's bad in my life right now don't affect the fact that God's still good. Amen? There ain't nothing gets to you that don't come through God. Amen. All right, everybody there, First Kings 17? Oh, yeah. And Elijah, verse 1, the Tishbite of Gilead said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain, Three years, but 
according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. In other words, God said, Go out and hide yourself. Now back up to my original statement. You may be somewhere right now that you don't want to be. If I hit you, just say amen. You may be somewhere you'd rather not be. You may be hiding from something right now. But you know what? God may have you there. Amen. You ever think about that? That's right. Miss Diane, sometimes we think we end up in places and we've been trained that way. We've been taught that way. We've been programmed that way. That when things don't go the way I want them to, notice I said the way I want them to, then I had to have done something wrong. Mm. You ain't that powerful. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You ain't that powerful. <laughs> you yourself cannot get up there and twist God's will. No, you can't. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. That's right. Maybe you're hiding out because that's where God needs you to be. If you were, if you were to see that right there in the word, the Lord come to him. Told him. Told him. Now, sometimes if the word of the Lord don't sound exactly what I want it to, Come on. Ooh, here we go. I begin to wonder if it's the word of the Lord. I love that good time Jesus. Amen. Riding down the back roads with the windows down, me and Jesus. <laughs> Sun shining. Can I get amen? Amen. Uh -huh. Well, what about Miss Diane when I'm going down the road and I don't feel Jesus? What about when I'm going down the road and I don't see Jesus? What about when I'm riding down the road and the windows are rolled up because there's a storm brewing out there? Amen. He's still there. Amen. 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 He's still there. He ain't going to send you somewhere he ain't already been. Amen. That's right. Amen. He ain't going to send you somewhere he ain't already prepared the way. I serve a God this morning's already got That's a plan. Right. That's right. Amen. Hey, hey, give him some praise this morning. He don't have the crowd to see him with his hands. Amen. Amen. I'm going to send you over in the land of famine, but I've already went before you. Amen. Amen. Prepare the place. If you're this morning in a place Come on. that you don't want to be, maybe you think you're in the land of famine this morning. Come Amen. On. Famine ain't got to be a big old sandwich. Come on. Amen. Famine can be things that's missing in your walk. It can be things that are missing in your life. It can be things that you don't see. Amen. I serve a God that can still work in a famine. Amen. Amen. He said, get you hence and turn eastward and hide yourself. In other words, here's where you need to go. Hey, I like the fact that even in the famine, even when he was in hiding, God was still leading him yes, where he, he needed was. to go. Yes, he was. Amen. Hey, ain't it good to know this morning Praise God. that even though you ain't where you're supposed to be. Amen. Even though you ain't where you want to be, that's right. God is still guiding and leading you in that's the way right. that you need to that's go. Right. Amen. Hey, I, that's hey, that's good stuff this morning. I don't care who you are. Hey, I'm glad I serve a Jesus this morning, Greg. He'll take a nine mile trip to come and get me because I done got lost somewhere. Amen. Amen. But he's still got a plan to get me back. <laughs> he does. And if he does me, come he on. does you. That's right. That's right. Amen. If you're sitting here this morning, and your name's wrote in the book of life, God is responsible. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is responsible for you. Yes. Yes. Amen. And you know what? I'll go one step farther. If you're sitting here this morning, lost, well, undone, whatever you want to call it, on your way to the devil's hell, he's still got a way for you. Amen. He'll come right down to the gate. Amen. And get you out of there. And it shall be, verse 4, that you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. <laughs> hey, that's what kind of power we're dealing with this morning. Amen. Amen. Hey, but imagine sitting there half starving to death and a bird fly down and give you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Amen. That's the kind of power God's got. He'll, he'll tell a bird that they've got to come. And feed you everything, amen. Did you catch that? Everything must abide by the word of God, amen. The word of God can move Ooh, anything. Glory, amen. Glory, glory, hey, if, if he can tell a bird to bring you food, amen, what are you worried about this morning, amen? Wherever you find yourself, let me tell you what, God's got a word for that, amen. amen. He's already speaking to things wherever you're at to sustain 
in you. That's right. Amen. Hey, thank you, Lord. He's already spoken to some things to sustain you that where you are right now, you may not want to be there, but He's providing provision Amen. that will keep you till He brings Amen. you out. I know I'm preaching better than y'all letting on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Maybe when y'all watch it on the tape, you'll get a little more excited. Amen. Or maybe it's just me. Amen. I like this verse 5. You want to know the key? Come on. You want to know the key? Amen. Now, a lot of them are about to just skip right over to 6. Can I get Amen. amen. It, 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 somebody, that's a wonder Greg ain't 15 people going to the bathroom right now because we don't want to hear what's about to go down right here. So he went and did according to the word Amen. of the Lord. Yes. You want to realize how to be sustained in the place you are right now? Now look, I suckered y'all into raising your hand and admitting that you were somewhere you didn't want to be. Come on. See how I did that? like reverse psychology. Now I'd ask you how many want to get out. Come on. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You want me to tell you how? First five it. Amen. Amen. First five it. Yes. That's what I'm going to call this message. Remember that, Jenny. She always asked me what I'm going to call it. There you go. Verse five. I like it. So he went and did according. Amen. If you would tell yourself, I'm going to go and do according to the word of the Lord, then you will get what God has in store for you. Amen. It may not come in your timeline. Guess what? Your timeline don't matter. Amen. Your thoughts don't matter. Your wishes don't matter. All that matters is the word of the Lord. Oh, but when we can give over. Amen. When you can give yourself over to the one that controls you, amen. then you get somewhere. Hardest thing to do, especially if you're a man, can I get amen? amen? Hardest thing to do in this world is to give over control. Yes, it is. That's what they tell me at work all the time. I run up and down that line, Greg, I'll get in the oven, I'll do all that nasty stuff, and they tell me, do you really like working that much, or are you afraid that nobody else can do it like you? And you know what the answer is? They can't do it like me. Amen. Amen. I've got to be in there. I've got to do it my way. Because I'm not giving up control. We're like that with God. Come on. See, a lot of us, Miss Diane, if my stomach rumbled one time and that raven didn't show up. <laughs> Can I get amen? amen? Greg, I think I was in the wrong holler, amen? I'd move one over, and I'd starve to death. <laughs> amen, a stack of peanut butter jelly sandwiches knee deep, one holler over, but I'd be so far off, I'd starve to death because I missed them. Bless you, Lord. Because I didn't listen to what God said. That's right. God don't work in your timing. Hey, maybe he, maybe he had to stay in there long enough that his faith could be grown That's right. to make the next step. There you go. See, we always think it's worse. Oh, woe is me. Being in this old holler starving to death. And God said, you know what? You ain't in that holler starving to death. You're in the holler getting prepared. Amen. For what I'm fixing to do Amen. through you. Amen. You'll just if you'll just shut up Amen. and listen be to what I say and do. I, I, we ain't got to figure. That's why I love Jesus. Not only because you saved my soul, Greg, not only because you set me free from all them things, but I ain't even got to think. Come on. I love it. I love when Jesus just tells me what to do, and all I got to do is do it. Praise God. We got to do according to what He says. Not your thoughts. Since your thoughts are not His thoughts, His ways are above our ways. Amen? If you were building. A, a rocket ship in the parking lot, you're not going to come get me to design it. <coughs> Josh, I'll blow it up and kill us all. That's right. You go to NASA or somewhere and get you somebody got some kind of degree or some kind of learning or something, you'd want him building it. Now, why do we try to build God's stuff? Come on. Well, most of the time, all we do is mess it up. You highlight 
out your Bible, you need to do that. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook that is before the Jordan. He went and done exactly what God said. God said, you go there, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to ask why. I'm not going to bellyache. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to go over there and sit by the river just like God said. That's right. What if? What if we just done it because God said it? Run around that church. Yeah, run around the church. Say Walmart. Whatever God tells you to do, what if we done that without asking? Just simply because God said so. Amen. A lot of us wouldn't be in a place we are right now. Amen. Amen. A lot of us got uh, is self inflicted. Can I get amen? Amen. Hey, you got to, Tyler, you got to admit you got a problem before you can ever fix it. Amen. You, and you know what? If we're honest, a lot of our greatest problem is ourselves. We spend more time listening to this than we do the Lord. Listening to somebody else. Listen to somebody else's experience. Hey, everybody ain't going to do it like you do. Everybody ain't got to go where we go. And a lot of people... Hey, opinions like an elbow bite. Everybody got one, and they gonna give it to you. We'll whip that thing out quickly. Amen. How many times do you automatically tell them what the Word of God says? Wow. Bless you, Lord. But how many times do you tell them what you think? Come on. Come on. Oh, guilty as charged right here. Amen. Let me tell you what I think. We should be in our own heads and shut up. They don't need to know what you think. We've seen what happened when you was doing all the thinking. Can I get amen? amen. Hey, not too good. I like you. Verse 6 says, and the ravens brought him bread. They done. The ravens done. The birds done. Got the brain the size of my little finger there, Miss Diane. But guess what? They done what God told them. Why? Because everything must be in subjection to the Word of God. And if God can tell a raven to bring him a sandwich, you better believe right now he's got something Amen. already working where you're at. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Not only did he bring him bread, from promised meat too. He's above us peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Miss Diane. Got meat. He had a ham sandwich. <laughs> no, I didn't have ham, he was Jewish. <laughs> hey man, roast beef, how's that? <laughs> in the morning and in the evening. Twice a day. <coughs> and he drank of the brook. Amen. Now God <coughs> didn't set a whole table out before him. And give him everything he wanted. But he gave him everything he needed. That's right. That's right. Amen. We got to realize that sometimes your want list ain't going to get there. Everybody, how many people in here wanted something and you didn't get it? Everybody. If, if you didn't have your hand up, you ain't been saved or praying long enough. Amen. Or you're lying. There you go. But how many people in here got what you need? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. All the time. Every day, Miss Diane, I get what I need. Me too. Thank you. Now, sometimes my needs and my wants get crossed up. Yes, sir. Amen. And I mistake one for the other. But God never does. Amen. There you go. Goes back to we ain't got to understand why God does what he does. You just got to do what he says. God sees tomorrow. And y'all hear me say that all the time. God sees next week. God sees next year. God sees what's coming. We don't. We see right now. There you go. And that's all we get worried about. Amen. And you never know when God does something that you don't want him to do. Amen. Anything ever happened you didn't want to happen? Amen. And you prayed and you didn't get exactly what you wanted? There's a reason for that. And you know what? In the whole scope of things, it don't really matter. Because God knows what he's doing. He does. And he gave me what I needed, Miss Diane. Right. I ain't got to understand it. See, that's the 
hardest part. Now, uh, we get to thinking that God owes me this, and God, uh, is that just me? God owes me this, and He owes me that, and God's got to do this, and uh, they'll tell you, uh, you go boldly before. We think sometimes that I can walk up to the King of Heaven, kick the door in, tell Jesus I'm here to get with this right here, and I ain't leaving without it. There you go. That's how we think, right? Next thing I know, I, I don't know if Jesus has got bouncers, but I'm just going to use that analogy because that's what I got. Some dude got my arm bit up around my house, Greg, and they're kicking me right back out the same door I kicked in, amen, amen. because what I've come to get ain't there. Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. I've got to change my thinking into his thinking. Yes. And my that's the hardest part. Yes. Amen. See, he provided. He said, right, here's what I'll give you, and here's what you're going to give now you better believe when God speaks to me and tells me I can have something, I'm going to hang on that sucker as long as I can. Amen. There you go. But you know what? i got to be very careful. i got to be very careful, and you do too, and all these people that watch do too, and that you know what? That you don't trade your voice for God's voice. Amen. And you try to speak things that God never Amen. intended for you to have, and you try to make him give them to you. Because then you going to do it. There you go. I've been praying for a million bucks forever. <laughs> hey man, I'll says pray about everything. <laughs> Josh, every day when I pull up and check the mail, I'm, I'm talking, I want cash. I don't want a check. I want to roll up there and there'd be a big old box sitting there. Two chat from God. <laughs> Two chat from God. But it ain't happened yet. Because you know what I believe God saying? Oh, you couldn't handle a million dollars. There you go. Amen. You couldn't handle it. Now I could get out, open the mailbox. It's not in there. Greg, I can kick the mailbox down. Where's my money, God? He ain't going to change his mind. He never told me I'd be a millionaire. I ain't read that in here anymore. I'm just kidding. I don't pray for a million dollars every year, every day. I'll pray for five, might as well get it all. <laughs> no, I pray for my wife. Amen. Come on. I pray for my kids. That's right. I pray that they be healthy. Amen. I pray every day that they have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. That's worth more than any million dollars to be sitting out by the mailbox. Amen. Let me tell you what, money can run out, amen, but salvation never will. Peace never will. Joy never will. Amen. 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 If God give me a million dollars, we ain't no telling what would happen. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. We all like to say things. Boy, I'd give this much to the church. and I, No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you lie. Church wouldn't see you till you broke again. Can I get amen? <laughs> Might as well tell the truth. Everybody sitting here knowing that. You get a new truck, well, you go out of church on Sunday to go drive that new truck. You get a new boat, you go out of church Sunday to go fish in that new boat. You buy a house in Florida, you go out of church on Sunday to go down there and lay on the beach. And I can go on and on. God knows your heart, Amen. and he knows mine. <laughs> but see, if I go on what God said, he said I could have my family. Amen. He said I could have peace Amen. and pass understanding. Amen. Amen. He said that when everything was going straight to hell in a handbag in this world or in my life, I could still find peace and comfort in the one named Jesus. That's what we need to be going by. See, God don't, he ain't a want God. He ain't an open checkbook. But he is a provider. Amen. He is a provider. You won't find God in the newspaper where he ain't paid his child support. Amen. He'll always take care of of his kids. Yes, he does. Amen. Hey, I love my kids, Miss Diane, but I don't give them everything they want. No. And I never will. No. I give them more than I had. Amen. But you know what? I'm not giving them everything they want, and I'm not required to. No. But I am required to feed them. Mm. Amen. I've tried to break them from it, but it ain't worth it. <laughs> I've got to give them clothes. Yep. I've got to supply their needs. Yep. Now what if we ever got that mindset with God? 
God, when I open my eyes this morning, I need this oxygen, and praise God, you give it to me. Yep. Amen. I need to. I need the peace of knowing that my family woke up with me this morning, and they are okay, and you gave it to me. God, you give me a house to live in. Yeah, I got to get up and go to work to pay for it. But you give me the ability to get up and go to work. Amen. Amen. It's all in how we look at it. God is faithful. Amen. Sometimes we don't see that, but He is, and He does exactly what He said He does, and He'll take care of you. It may not be a steak, it may be a bologna sandwich, but praise God, He had a sandwich. Amen. Amen. And it came to pass after a while, amen, that the brook ran dry. Because there had been no rain in the land. And I ain't got nothing to drink. See, some of us are there now. It's done dried up. It's dried up where you're at right now. It's time to move. Amen. You've been there long enough. Hey, Greg, that water didn't dry up until God said it could. Well, how do you get that? Hey, if he can tell a raven to bring him a sandwich, like I said, he can speak to that water. Jesus done it. If you'll read on over in the book of Mark, Jesus stepped out and told the water what he could do. And where did he learn it from? Amen. And you got to back up. Hey, Elijah's the one praying for it not to rain, remember? Amen. He prayed for it not to rain. Now, how can he stand and gripe about something that he prayed for? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Hey, even when the water dried up, God already had a plan. Amen. Even though right now you feel like you're in lack of something, you're needing something, something's drying up, something's running out, God's already got a plan. Amen. It all goes back to verse 5. It. Amen. Listen to what God said. Arise. Get thee to, I ain't even going to try to say that. Marathon. Thank you. Which belongeth to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Amen. That's right. He said, get up out of here. It's dried up. I need you to go over here now. But I've already got something working. I'm thankful this morning for a God that's already got something working. Amen. And you yeah. should be too. How many people be honest this morning? Say I'm in lack of something right now. I'm in a place where it feels like something's run out. It's dried up. I can see the bottom of the barrel. I come to tell you this morning, do what God said because he's already got a plan. There you go. Amen. He's already working on it. He took him, Miss Diane, from the city to the holler. He provided for him there and when that dried up, he'd already begin to work on a woman. Now I'm going to get ahead of myself, but y'all bear with me. He, he began to work on a woman that didn't have nothing. Amen. Yes, he did. Maybe now I'll go one step further. Maybe you're where you're need, where you're at right now. Not for you. Amen. What if God put Ooh, you in that? Now you preach it. Now you preach it. There you go. Because somebody's coming your way. That's right. That has less than That's you. That's right worse than you, and you think you have an opportunity to believe Praise God what God for that opportunity. Amen. Oh, we all want to talk about the Word. And we'll quote it. We'll whip that thing out like a switchblade. Uh -huh. <laughs> but do we believe it? Come on, there there you go. When it's you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When, when your life ain't where you thought it'd be. When you ain't getting what you thought you'd get. I say it all the time. You got faith to gain a mustard seed. And you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. We all do that. Till it's our kids that are sick. Ooh, preaching now, son. Till you lose your job. That's right. This ain't a turn down message. I'm just coming to tell you this morning. Maybe you were in that situation. That God can show himself mighty. Amen. There you go. Amen. It says he goes to and fro, looking, looking for somebody to work mighty on their behalf. Amen. Now we think he's going to swoop in there with an armful of money 
and all your stuff. But what if he's working mighty on your behalf for somebody else? Amen. Mm. Amen? That's good. That's good. He said, I've already told the woman over there. Mm -hmm. She's already ready. It's already prepared. And so he arose. Notice he just keeps doing what God says. You want to know, we all want to be great. Amen. Can I get amen? I hope everybody sitting in here, I hope everybody watching wants to be great in the kingdom of heaven. If you don't, I'll be checking something. Because somebody needs you to be great. <coughs> whether it's your kids, whether it's Sunday school, whether it's those people you work with, I could go on and on. Somebody needs you to be great because everybody has a different, a different definition of what great is. Amen. Great to him was a, bra a raven bringing a sandwich. That's right. In that moment. Right. That's what he needed. And God sent it. Me. So he arose and went to Zarephath. Zarephath, thank you. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there. She was there. As soon as he got there, there she, was. she was there. Now, I know it's just by chance at that very moment she went out there to get some water. <laughs> at the very moment he walked through the gate. No. God already, he already told him, he said, look, I've already moved on this lady. She may not even know it yet. Amen. Amen. She's just thinking she's going to go get some water. But i got a plan. I thank God this morning for a God that's got a plan. You may not realize right now what part of the plan you factor into, but you're a part. I come to tell you this morning, you're a part of somebody's plan, and somebody's a part of yours. She was there gathering sticks, and he called to her. He said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. See, the, the brook had dried up. He's probably a little thirsty. Amen? Maybe, and just think about it, you can do with it whatever you want. Maybe he was just trying to test it a little bit. Amen? Maybe he was thinking, I wonder if this is her. Anybody in here ever prayed for something, and when it shows up, you don't know if it's real or not? Yeah. Can I get Amen? Is this real, God? Maybe that's what he was doing. I don't know. Maybe say, well, I wonder if this is her. I'll start off with some water because I'm pretty thirsty. Go get me a drink of water, please. Mm. <clears throat> and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her. And said... Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. As she went to fetch it, he realized in that moment, she was the one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He realized in that moment, this lady has been placed here by God because he said he would. He's going to bless both of them. He said, you know what? I'll take a little water. Bring me some bread too. And she said... Verse 12, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have no cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a crude. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And die. So here was a man starving. I love how God works. <laughs> he took a starving and thirsty man and he hooked him up with a lady that was starving and dying. Amen. We're too bad come together. God made good. Amen. Amen. It took most times you had two bads together, it gets double bad. That probably ain't even word I'm using. God can take your bad Amen. and somebody else's bad. He can bless both of you. Amen. Why? Because he's got a plan. Amen. He's got a plan. And what may be bad in your eyes may not be bad in God's eyes. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Fear not. Go and do as you have said, but make me therefore a little cake first. And bring
bring it unto me, and after that, make one for you and your son. Mm. Now, Miss Diane, we all like to think we'd have done that. Well, yeah. I ain't got nothing. I got a little bit right here, and Greg wants my little bit. Oh, yeah, here. I think I forget you, man. I know I ain't the only one because y'all laughing. I can't give out of what I don't have to somebody else. So I hate to throw this in here. But you know what, Miss Diane? I only believe in that me, myself, and I, God. I only believe in that me and mine right here on this pew and the heck with the rest of y'all, God. I'm going to get mine first and I'll give you what's left, God. I believe the Bible says a little something. I hate to bring it in here, but here's a word from the sponsor, amen. I hate to bring it in here where it says I should esteem my brother amen. higher than myself. That's right. Now you preach it. I don't know that. Nobody want to hear that. We think that's when we've got an abundance. We think that's when we everything's going our way and the sun's shining. We don't think about that when we're sitting there and all we've got is enough to sustain one person. And God says, give it to somebody else. Amen. Has God ever run out? Never. Never. Has God ever provided a way when there was no way? Always. Hey, he said he made highways in the desert, amen. That's what it says in the Word. If he can do that, he's already got a plan. He does. And if we don't turn, I want you to hear me now. Okay. And I ain't talking about money. Don't you cover your wallet and worry about I'm going to pass the pan again. Amen. If you don't get it out of your hand, if you don't get it out of your hand, how can it grow? If you don't get it out of your hand, how can it do what God's put That's it in right. your hand? Praise God, God gave her that, Praise not her. God. Thank you, Lord. Every good gift is from above. Everything in your life that you have, God gave it to you. Yes, he Amen. did. And you know what? She could have went and made a piece of bread for her and her son. And guess what? They would have died. And, and Miss Diane, I believe God sent another widow. He just spoke a word to him. That's right. But you know what? He spoke a word to her too. Yes, he did. Amen. I bet he laid it on her heart to go pick those sticks up in that very moment. Uh-huh. He laid it on her heart when he asked her, hey, go get me some water. Hey, she's out there getting sticks to feed her kid. Some dude walks up and says, hey, I need a cup of water. Go get me one. She went and got it. She done it. Why? Because she was led. Amen. You'll never, the devil will never tell you to help a stranger out. No, he won't. He'll tell you to keep it. Amen. Yeah, the devil would have said, forget that fool. Make your own case. He should have brought his own. You're going you're gonna to pick him over your kids and yourself? Can I get amen? Hey, that ought to hit home. Sometimes we miss out because we're listening to the wrong one. Exactly. We love to quote that scripture, how my sheep know my voice and no other they'll answer to. Hey, everybody sitting in here at some point forgot what Jesus sounded like. That's right. If we'll be honest, sometimes Greg, Jesus sounds like me. <laughs> and he sounds like you too. Right. There you go. Amen. Hey, I'm just going to be honest this morning. That's right. For thus saith the Lord, Fear not. I love verse 14, for thus saith the Lord, not what I think, not what I hope will happen. But here's what God says. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends the rain. Exactly. See, not only by steaming her brother, hiring herself, did she provide for him and them both. They said, hey, go make you one or make me one, then you make one for you and him. So all three of them got to eat. Amen? Now, that may have been a little of a cake than what she planned on, but all three of them got to eat. They said, you know what? Don't you realize he's the one that prayed that it wouldn't rain? 
He's the one that started all this. Mm -hmm. I can preach a whole other message on sometimes we pray for, for some stuff. Hey man, you don't know how long it's going to take you to get there. You don't know what you're going to have to go through to see it to, to fulfillment. Can I get amen? Yes. I love, well I don't really love, but I kind of laugh inside myself. Every time I hear somebody stand up and say, Lord, give me patience. Oh no, no you didn't. Amen. You just jumped off in that with both feet. Amen. Only way you get patient is you got to get tried. Amen. Hey. And she went verse fifteen. You see, do you see a pattern here? Obedience. God spoke. God spoke through somebody, and everybody listened. Now what happens if, if Elijah would have went, and the ravens come and fed him, the brook dried up, God said go to the city, there will be a woman there. He got to the city. The woman didn't feel like her shirt was nice enough that morning. A woman thought she might mess up the service. A woman thought she might get in the way. A woman thought she might mess with the choir, might mess with the word, might mess with the spirit. And she just sat there on a padded pew and looked through her pocketbook or looked through her Bible or got up and went to the bathroom and missed Amen. Woo, that there opportunity. Go. That's right. There you go. Amen. See how I worked that all back around there? When God speaks, Amen. your part, and it may not be you. It may be somebody else's plan. But God's got it all. I wouldn't even want to imagine what God's got going on. The plans that he's got laid out. At home I bought these plans. I love lighthouses. And I bought like a set of plans for, I think it's the same time, I don't remember which one it was. And I like to look at it. don't make no sense to me, Greg, but I like to look at it. But I picture what God's plans would look like if you laid them out. And, and, and the crisscrosses, and this and going here, and this and going over there, and this has got to happen. And, and imagine that. Now imagine when God speaks that one word to you, and he says, testify. Mm -hmm. He says, sing that song again. Mm -hmm. He says, sing that third verse again. Mm -hmm. He said, go hug somebody's neck. Go tell them you'll pray for them. Text them. Call them. Stop what you're doing right now. Pray for them. And we don't. And it's like we stick a... You ever seen the cogs turning? It's like we stick a stick in it. Because we, we throw God's plan out. Now, good thing about God. He's always got another one. Yes, he does. But what if we just did what God said? What if we read this so much? Yes. Pray so much. Yes. Listen so much that after a while my voice didn't sound like Jesus' voice. That's right. My higher brain schemes didn't line up with this, so I didn't listen to them. There you go. Amen. How wonderful that would be. She went and did according <clears throat> to the saying of Elijah. And she and he in her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according Amen. to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. What if, what if we spoke what God spoke? What if we did what God did? Not out of our abundance, not out of our wisdom, our knowledge, but because God said to do it. Now I ask you again, how many people in here, God's told you to do something, you didn't do it? All of us, right? Stop it. You gotta, we got to realize that this thing's bigger than us. Yeah. By her one act, she saved three people. Amen? Yeah. By his one act, he saved three people. AFL, 
he'd have never made it to the city, he could have never spoke the word of God to tell her how to get out of it. <coughs> Whatever God speaks to you, somebody else may be relying on that. And I believe God speaks stuff to us just for us. And I believe we know the difference. Amen? So I'd ask you this morning, I want to read it one more time, since it's going to be a title of message because I like it. Verse 5. Verse 5. Remember that. Get a trademark on that. It's pretty catchy. You want to know how to get out of where you're at? You want to know how to stay in line with what God's trying to do? You want to know how to keep going when you don't want to? When it looks like everything ain't lining up? When life ain't what you thought it was? He went and did according to the word of the Lord. You know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you want if God to shut up, all you got to do is close this. That's right. But you want him to speak to you. Open. Reveal the mysteries. Open. Give you peace. Give you power. All you got to do is open it up. Read it. Study it. Amen. This is the this is probably one of the most neglected books in the world. People got them laying around everywhere. They never open them. That holds the most blessing. A lot of them, Miss Diane, sat on a church pew every Sunday. There may be somebody out there right now fixing to die. Hey, you don't know what that word God puts in you. You don't know how important that is to somebody. That's right. Somebody could be one word from life or death. Well, you mean they're going to die? There could be one word that could get them in a church and get them saved. And if they don't get saved, guess what? They're going to die and go to hell. It could be your one act of obedience. God, and, and think about it this way. It could be the worst day of your life. It could be that day, Greg, when all your stars didn't line. And everything ain't adding up. And I don't find myself exactly where I want to be. That could be the one day that God sends somebody into my life that both of us can be blessed if we listen to what God says. That woman's just going to get some sticks. Amen? God had control. Everybody that comes in your life, hear me now, and I'll close with this. Everybody that comes in your life, guess what? They're put there. Amen? Now some of them will sit around and try to wish, figure out, wish, think of a way to get them out of there. Or is that just me? Might as well tell the truth, right? But what if? <coughs> what if I did what God told me to do? What if you did what God told you to do? Mm. What if we did it every Sunday? What if we did it every Wednesday? What if we done it every day? We all want the world to be better. Amen. We all want people to get saved. We all want people to get healed and all these things. But hey, are you willing to do what God said to get it done? Amen. Alright. Anybody anybody got anything to say or do we'll pray and dismiss?